So today we're going to be working on three postcards. We have this galaxy scene, we have some potion bottles, and we have this acceptance letter. I'm going to go over everything that's in your kit. You should have two laser cut postcards. You should also have a blank piece of watercolor paper and this picture for tracing. You should have a dot card with your paint colors, a round size six brush and a detail brush, some black ink, a little bit of white acrylic paint, one of these wax seals and a glue dot for attaching it. So the first thing we're going to do is check out our colors. So get your brush wet and touch it to the dot and see what your colors look like. Okay, so for this postcard, we are going to be using this quinacridone rose, ultramarine blue, quinacridone purple blue, as well as some Payne's gray. The house itself is going to be painted using black ink. So the first thing we're going to do is our background, and we're going to do that by blending our colors. I'm going to show you how to do that on this scrap piece of paper. So in order for the colors to blend, you want your brush to be pretty wet. So I've got my brush wet and then I'm gonna grab some of my paint. I don't know if you can tell, but my paper is pretty shiny here, which means I'm using a decent amount of water. The next thing I'm gonna do is grab a different color. So I've got blue and you want it to touch the edge of the pink here. And again, my brush is wet, so it's blending together pretty well. And then I'm gonna grab some of my purple and touch it to the edge here. If you want, you can rinse your brush off and blend it a little bit more. What you don't want to do is try blending when your paint has already started to dry. So you can see along the top, the darker pink is dry. So if you get that wet, it's just not going to look as blended. I'm going to grab some of my Payne's Gray and blend it here. So we're going to be doing this for the whole sky. And depending on how it looks, we may need two layers. So I'm gonna start with my pink. I rinse my brush off just to make sure it's wet. And add some blue over here. And you have to work pretty quickly so you can't think too much about what colors you wanna use. I'm just adding water to the edges here. I'm going to add in some gray. Some more blue. This is just water. Add some pink. Now because the house silhouette is going to be done in black ink, I'm going to keep this dark gray color away from the building so that this stands out. Blue. And 
it may help to have a piece of paper underneath your painting because it does get kind of messy. So I'm just alternating the colors. There's not really a, a plan here, except for keeping the dark shade away from the building. I'm adding some more of the dark gray because this is still wet, it's still blending. It doesn't matter if the paint overlaps with the lines here because we're gonna come in with that ink and that ink is really opaque so you're not going to be able to see the paint. Okay, so make sure that you have all of your areas of sky covered. And then we're gonna let that dry and see what it looks like. If it needs to be darker, I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer of paint. So I allowed this to dry and it's a little bit light, so I'm going to do another layer of paint. Watercolor paint always looks darker when it's wet. So in order to really tell what your painting looks like, you have to let it dry off first um, and then work in layers. So I've got my brush. I'm gonna to try to keep the colors in the second layer similar to the ones that are in the first layer. So here I'm going to add this rose color. That purple is really dark. It's kind of overtaking the pink, so I'm going to push it down a little bit. If you have too much paint, you can always dry off your brush and then some suck some of that back up and dry it off on a paper towel. So there's my rose color. Some blue. And you want there to be some variation in the tone, so I don't want it all dark. some gray up here. And rinse off my brush and spread it out. Grab some pink. I'll add some purple down here. I want some of the lighter layer to show through, so I'm not adding the paint here. Um, it's mostly water. Some dark blue. Some more gray up here. some blue but not too dark and some dark purple some pink let's see I'm gonna add a little bit of pink up here
and finish over here with some purple. And down here I'm missing some color, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue. Okay, so I should have the whole thing covered. Now I'm going to wait for this to dry, and then we're going to add our white paint dots. So the next step, once this is dry, is to add our splattered stars here, as well as work on the building. Now it's very important that you make sure before you start working on the building that all of this is dry. So this is the one that I was working on before. And this was not completely dry, so you can see where the black started to bleed over. So you don't want that. If you're in a hurry, you can use a blow dryer to dry off the paint. It does take a while to dry when you're using a ton of water like we were earlier. So the first thing we're going to do is work on the splatters. So you should have a little bit of white paint in a container. You are going to need some to add some clean water to it because you want it to be more liquidy. So I've added some water to this and I'm going to grab some dark paper so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So what you want to do is, whoops, grab some of this paint on your brush you can either tap it against your finger or tap it against your other paintbrush gently. Again, you don't want to fill the brush with paint. And you want to work all over your paper. Now, if it doesn't look like this, if it's not coming off of the brush, you'll want to add more water. So I would just add a little bit of water at a time until you get the right consistency and test it out on a different piece of paper. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. So we want the splatters to go in the sky. I'm going to cover up some of this as I work. You don't have to do this, I just don't want giant splatters of white paint that I have to clean up. So. All right, I've got some paint. And just do a little bit at a time. Now you can use your bigger brush. It's a little bit harder to control though. here. And just keep doing it until you're satisfied with how it looks. All right. So I like that. So I'm going to stop and rinse off my brush. Make sure you uh, get all of the white paint off. So we're gonna be using our black ink next. So I'm just gonna look at this and make sure there aren't a bunch of splatters of white paint on it. And if there are, I'll try to pick them up. That's pretty good. So we're gonna need both of our brushes for this. So make sure both of your brushes are clean. I'm gonna start with this brush. And what I'm going to do is just fill in the larger spaces with it. So I'm not going to worry about these parts of the building that are sticking up. Because it's going to be too difficult to fill that in with this big brush. But I am going to fill in the big spaces.
Okay, so now we've got most of it filled in. I'm gonna rinse this off and put it aside. And get my small brush out. So we're gonna use the small brush to fill in the corners. So just slowly drag it along the edges. Now, unlike with the watercolors, it doesn't really matter if your ink is still wet and you're adding wet ink on top of it. This is all gonna dry really dark and opaque, so you're not gonna see any weird blurry lines. So that's all finished. So now we're going to be working on this envelope here for your acceptance letter. And the first thing we're going to need to do is mix a watery brown shade. So I'm using a mixture of all three of the raw sienna, burnt sienna, and Van Dyke brown. But I want to make sure that I have enough to cover the whole thing. So I'm using an equal amount of each type of paint, but this is mostly water. Oops. So that's pretty light. So that's what we want, kind of a tea stain color. We're also gonna wanna have a little bit of this left over for our corks when we do the potion bottles. So we're gonna cover this whole thing with this color. When you get to the crest, you wanna make sure not to overlap with the crest too much. We are going to paint it 
uh, with some black ink later on, but some of these places you can see are still white, so you don't want to cover those with brown paint. So just try to do it as evenly as possible. So there's our first layer of paint. And once that's dry, we'll come back in with a darker shade of this brown that we mixed earlier. Because we do want to add some darker color along the edges here, here, and along the top. So once this is dry, we're going to start adding our darker color. So I've mixed a darker version of this shade. Um, I'm going to make a little bit more just to make sure that we have enough. So this is the same. We've got a mix of raw sienna, burnt sienna, and Van Dyke brown, but we have more paint in this and less water, so it's darker. So I'm going to test it out. Okay, I think that works. So I'm gonna grab some of this, and I want it darker up here. So I'm just going to run this along the top edge and then I'm going to rinse my brush off and come back with just water and blend this out. And I rinse my brush again just to make sure this is all blended. So you just don't want a hard edge of this dark brown color. And we're going to do the same thing down here. So there's our paint and then rinsed off. So just water, we come back and blend this. I'm gonna rinse it again. I'm just adding water here. Okay, and do the same thing over here. Rinse off my brush and blend this. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing here as well. A little bit of paint and then come back with water. And 
and this is just water. If you're worried that it's going to end up blotchy, you can always just grab water and blend it out to the top edge here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is work on the crest, but I need to wait for this to dry. Actually, while I'm here, I'm gonna add a little bit of dark paint here. So this is where your wax seal is gonna go, so you don't need to go any further than this line. Let me grab my paint. Here and here. and rinse my brush off and blend it. And this is just water. Just making sure this is all blended out and I don't have splashes of dark color in the middle of the light shade. I'm going to grab a little bit of dark paint here with this brush. And this is all wet so it should blend pretty well. We don't need to worry about what this like looks like because it's going to get covered up. So the next thing we're going to work on now that this is dry is the crust. We're going to be using ink for that as well as our small brush. It's a little bit tricky to tell which spaces should be white and which ones should be painted. So I'm leaving this here as a reference. I'll also include this in your bag so that you can see. So I'm going to start on this side. And we're going to be leaving the symbol white. So I'm working very carefully. Looking at this to make sure I'm painting in the right spaces. As we get to this H, we want to avoid that as well. Okay, so as we come around here, we'll paint the edge, but we're going to bring the ink into this symbol.
Okay, so this space here will be left white. We'll come around here. Let's see. So this should be painted. All right, so we're gonna paint this. We're going to, again, avoid the H as well as this symbol. Okay, so up here, this is going to be black. Okay, and we're going to fill the snake in. And leave the spaces around it white. Again, we want to avoid the H. Fill this spot in here. Okay, and you can see there are a bunch of laser cut dots. When it's this small, you can't really see the details, um, but if you can avoid those, go ahead. If not, it's not gonna make a huge difference. So now I'm just filling in the empty space here around the H. Just working around these small areas. So we've got it all filled in. The last thing you're going to do is take your glue dot and attach it to your wax seal and then peel the backing off and add it here. Okay. And you're all set. So the last postcard we're going to be working on is the one with the potion bottles on it. So you should have your picture to trace. So to trace, I use a light box. If you don't have that, you can tape this to a sunny window, put your watercolor paper on top and trace that way with the pencil. So once we've got it traced, we're gonna start mixing our colors. 
So I've used a purple, pink, and green here, but you've also got blue, you've got a very deep gray. Um, so you can decide what colors you want to use, but I'm going to start with some purple. Now the purple we have is a purple-blue mix, and it's pretty bright on its own. So I'm going to add in a little bit of Payne's Gray to make it darker. Okay, so we've got a really light shade here. Now we want this to be mostly water. With the potion bottles, we're going to be working with two layers. So we're going to start with a light layer, which is what you're going to see here as the bubbles, and then we'll add the darker color later on. So I'm going to start with my light shade. And I'm going to work around this here. So this is meant to be a reflection on the glass, so we don't want anything there. but we can cover up the bubbles. You just wanna make sure that you'll still be able to see your pencil outline for later. If you're having trouble getting into this corner here, you can use your smaller brush. I'm filling all of this in. With our lighter shade. So I'm going to work on my next potion bottle. I'm just cleaning up the edges here. The brush is too big for that. So I'm going to use the smaller brush. So I'm gonna mix my next shade. I like this pink, but again, it's kind of bright. So this is pretty watery, you don't want it to be too dark. And I'm gonna add in a very, very small amount of burnt sienna. And that's gonna turn this into more of a reddish pink. I'm just adding a little bit at a time. At a certain point, you'll add too much and it'll look more brown. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so I like that shade. So I'm going to use that for my next one. And again, for the corners, you might want to grab your small brush. And you want to leave this reflection here white, so don't paint that. Okay, so there's my second one. Now I'm going to work on this one. Rinse my brushes. So with my original, I have this dark green shade. You have a sap green on your palette, so if you want to use that, you can. So this is just a very watery sap green. check this out and see what it looks like. Okay, so that works. It's pretty light. So it's going to be our first layer. All 
Até só. Okay, so we have our first layer of paint down. We're gonna have to wait for this to dry until we work on the next layer. So while we're doing that, we can work on the rest of the painting. So we also have the corks at the top and the outlines to work on. So we should have some leftover light brown from when we were doing the envelope. So that's what we're gonna use for our corks. So we're gonna use this small brush. I'm just mixing it up so it was starting to have some of the color settle on the bottom. Okay. That's pretty light, so I'm gonna grab some of this darker color, mix it in. So that was also left over from the envelope. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start with this lighter shade here and start filling this space in. Right, and I'm going to take this darker shade and drop some of that in too. I'm just dotting it on. And same thing here, I'm gonna take the darker color and just put some spots in there. And do the same thing for these other two. Adding some of the darker color there. And the last one. And a darker shade. So the next thing we're going to work on is our outline. So we want to line this in gray. So I'm going to grab some Payne's gray, with a bigger brush, a little bit of water, and some of that. Add water because that's way too dark. see what this looks like. Okay, so you just want a light to medium gray, so that looks good right there. So we're gonna use our small brush. And we're just gonna work on outlining where we have our pencil marks. So you wanna be careful this is still wet here, so I'm not going to work on this until the end.
start working on this one. And this last one. Okay, and it looks like the brown is still wet here, so I'm not going to add this line until later on. And I think I accidentally touched this here or something, so I'm going to add a little more brown. So these are dry. So now we're going to work on the potion. We're going to work on making this darker. We're going to avoid these bubbled areas as well. Okay. So I've got my base colors here. They're pretty light, so I'm going to add more paint. So for my purple, I'm going to grab this. And a little bit more of the gray. And see what that looks like. Okay, that's pretty dark. Alright, so I'm going to see what this looks like here. That's good. So I'm adding in my dark color. You want your brush pretty wet so that we have time to work around these bubbles. So I'm gonna go over here and finish this part with my small brush so I don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, I'm going to continue using this as I work around the bubbles. If you're using your larger brush, it's going to be hard to get in these spaces. There's one small one up here. All right, so this is it. Now I'm gonna add some different colors while this is still wet. So, 
it's hard to see, but this is still pretty wet. So while it's wet, you can still work with it. So I'm going to take my small brush and add in some blue. And maybe a little gray. So it'll be a little more visible when it's dry, but I've got some blue and some gray mixed in there. Add a little more blue down here. Okay, now I'm gonna work on this one. So again, I just want a deeper shade of this color. So I'm going to grab some rose paint. And a little bit of burnt sienna. More rose. Okay, so I like that shade. Staying away from our bubbles. Using my small brush. And I'll keep using it over here. I like how that one looks, so I'm not going to add in any extra colors, but if you want, you can. Um, I think a little bit of just the plain rose would look good dropped in there. Like I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm doing it anyway, but I have to show you, so it's okay. So that bright pink mixed in. Now we're going to work on our green. The sap green is pretty bright on its own. So I think I'm going to add a bit of gray to this. Just a little bit. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice green. A little bit more clean. Okay. Let's start filling this in. And we've got a couple of bubbles over here. So just work around those. So I'm going to I'm 
gonna add in some blue. Just a little bit. Mix it in. Okay, so the corks are dry. So I'm gonna grab my gray and finish this. Just adding gray lines there as well. So those are our potion bottles. So here are our three final postcards. Just to note, if you are going to send these through the mail, you may want to spray some protectant on them so that they don't get smudged if it's raining. Um, you can also put them in a plastic sleeve. This one will actually need a plastic sleeve or a different envelope on top of it because of wax seal. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you end up painting this, we would love to see it. Please post it as a comment on Facebook and keep an eye on our calendar for more crafts throughout the rest of the summer. And please check out our summer reading website so that you can see our adult summer reading challenge. Bye.